I died at the Smart Hat that here again. So uh, in this lecture, we have to do the first lab. And uh, in this lab, uh, we are going to work on the requirements needed for the hotspot to work. So there are some requirements that uh, are needed uh, for the hotspot to work. Some of the requirements are to have a one public IP address means that the router that we are going to make it hotspot has internet connectivity. The second requirement is uh, to have the uh, DNS uh, set uh, on uh, the router. The third requirement is to have, of course, the router as uh, version 7, because uh, we are going to work on this course on the router as version 7. So uh, please uh, upgrade your router to the latest version on router as version 7, the stable version. And uh, yeah, then in this case, you can use the hotspot on uh, this uh, version. So those are the main requirements. Of course, there are some more requirements. We will see them later, uh, like creating a bridge, putting the wireless inside this bridge. Uh, later, we are going to work with the uh, certificate for Let's Encrypt, but all of those are going to be built up step by step. So I'm not going to give all the information directly to you in one video. Otherwise, it will be too much. So I am going to divide the, the configuration to be step by step until at uh, the end of the course, we will have a full understanding of how to set up the hotspot completely. So now the first step is to check the main requirements that uh, are needed uh, on the hotspot and uh, we are going to configure them and uh, check if they are there and then we will see what uh, we will be doing by the end of this lecture. So as you can see here, we have uh, seven points to work on uh, based on the uh, main requirements for the hotspot. Now for the lab, it's still the same. So I'm still using this uh, scenario. I have my hotspot uh, router or the Mikrotik over here, which is connected to the cable to uh, the ISP to be able to get the uh, internet. So let's start directly with point number one. Enable the HTTP client on interface Ethernet 1 so the router is connected to the Internet. So that is the first requirement, as I have already explained, that we need to have Internet on the router. But before we do that, I would like to check first if this router has the uh, version 7. So you can read it over here. It's on version 7.13. This is the latest version as per today. You can also go to system. And from the system, you can go to resources. And then you can see over here, there is the version. 7.13 stable. So this is the latest version that I have just uh, upgraded my router to that version. Now I want to connect uh, the router to the internet. So meaning if I go back to the picture over here, I'm connected on uh, this router. I'm connected to the interface Ethernet 1. So here there is a port Ethernet 1 connected to the internet. So this uh, interface Ethernet 1, I want to enable on it the HCP client because there is zero router giving me IP address for using the HTTP server. So giving IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and so forth. So then this router will be, will be able to go to the internet. So let's do that. I will go to the Mikrotech router. So this is the first requirement to have one connectivity. So IP the HTTP client, and I enable on the Ethernet one I will say I want DNS, I want default route, and I want the NTP. And then I'll say, okay, here we go. We can see that it has received an IP address. And we can also see, uh, of course, the subnet mask as well. And if we go to IP routes, we can see that it has received the default route. And that's uh, good. And then if we go to IP DNS, we can see that it has received those DNS. Of course, uh, those are DNS for uh, open uh, DNS. Uh, so uh, uh, they are for protection. If you want, you can just put uh, some public DNS over here and then you go. So let's apply it. And we go over here and we say, we, we don't want the DNS to be received. So I want to use the public one and in a moment it will go away. So. You can do it this way if you want. You can keep uh, the open DNS as well if you want some protection. That's also possible. Point number one is done. Point number two, check if Ethernet 1 has received an IP address. We have checked and yes, it has received an IP address. And of course, the DNS, that's also another requirement that we require to have on the router. Now, we have to create a bridge and put inside of it WLAN 1 and WLAN 2 interfaces. Why I need to do that? If I go back to the explanation, so what I need to do now is that I want to provide the uh, uh, hotspot on uh, the 2.4 gigahertz and on the 5 gigahertz. So on the WLAN 1 and on the WLAN 2. 
So I want uh, that uh, anyone who has a phone on 2.4 uh, or on 5 can connect to the internet using the hotspot, of course. So what I can do, I can bridge them together. I put them inside a bridge interface. And on this bridge interface, then I can put the IP address. I can do the DHCP server. I can do anything. So meaning if someone comes and connect and has, for example, a phone having a capability for 5 gigahertz, then he can connect to this network. And another one has a phone which has capability of only 2.4 then it can connect to that network. But both of them, they are under the same bridge, means under the same network. So both of them are just one network. So that's what they're asking us to do here. So how to do that? Very simple, we create a bridge interface. We can call it a bridge hotspot. This is for the hotspot, then we know. And then I'm going to put inside the, this inter interface, the bridge, I can put the WLAN 1 and I will put the WLAN 2. Of course, WLAN 1 and WLAN 2 by default, they are disabled the interfaces. So if you go to wireless, you can see they are both disabled. We will enable them in a moment, but just to show you, WLAN 1 is for the 2.4 gigahertz. You can see this for the 2.4 gigahertz. So 2 gigahertz means 2.4 gigahertz. There is the unlicensed frequency and the two, WLAN 2 is for the 5 gigahertz. You can see five gigahertz only. So I'm going to use both of them. Port number three is done. Port number four, go to WLAN one interface, set the mode to AP bridge, band N, and find low usage frequency and set it, then the SSID to be Wi-Fi hotspot, and we have to do the same for WLAN 2. What does it mean? Over here, that means that we have now to configure the wireless because they are now um, they are uh, disabled. We have to enable them, and we have to create the wireless, meaning that they provide a SSID, which is called Wi-Fi hotspot. We make it an AP bridge to be able to allow the uh, phones or the uh, end customers to connect to it. And we have to find a uh, frequency to use a uh, frequency which doesn't have a lot of interference. So we are going to do that on the WLAN 1 and WLAN 2. So we go to the wireless first. Let's enable both of them. Of course, we are not going to put any password because as we said, Hotspot is an open wireless network. We don't put any password. What we need to do, we go first to the WLAN 1. And let's make it advanced mode. And over here, I'm going to change it to AP Bridge. Now, you can choose uh, BG, BG, BG or BGN, but I prefer to use only N. The reason why is that N is faster and B and G, they are already very old. And uh, yeah, if uh, some phones, they still have uh, uh, B and G, so good luck. I don't want them to be connected. So I'm only going to use the N. All right. Now, the SSID, we said uh, that we have to name it Wi-Fi Hotspot. So let's change it. Wi-Fi Hotspot. All right. Now, the, we use the regulatory domain over here. Very important. You put your country here. So I'm going to put here the Netherlands. And for the installation, you can say it's indoor. Um, now, what uh, is missing is about uh, uh, the channel, which I'm going to use 20 megahertz. I'm not going to increase it anyway on 2.4 gigahertz, 20 megahertz is what you need to set. Um, the frequency, that's what is important. So we have to find a frequency which is on my neighbor, doesn't have a lot of usage. So we can do the frequency usage. And then we can just check which frequency is less used. So I can see over here 2447. So let's take that one. So I will say here 2447. And that's it. So that's uh, all I need to do on the 2.4 uh, gigahertz. Now I do on the 5 gigahertz the same thing. We go to advanced mode, we put it AP bridge to allow anyone to connect to it. Also on the 5 gigahertz, I'm not going to use um, the uh, a, A is very old. We can put N and AC. That's a good idea. And uh, the SSID, we also name it Wi-Fi as we name it on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi hotspot. Regulatory domain, we put here the country. And installation is indoor. 
Now, um, you can use if you want 40 megahertz over here, if you want to 20 and 40 megahertz, but I'm going now to make simple use the channel with 20 megahertz. Of course, these topics are some advanced topics. Uh, we see them normally on the uh, wireless engineer course, uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave it on 20 megahertz. The frequency. So let's uh, make a frequency usage to see which frequency is less uh, used and we choose it. Normally on the 5 GHz is much less anyway because not a lot of people use 5 GHz. So let's take, let's take 5180. This is a good one. The first one. 5180. Let's see. It's already there. 5180. And then I will say apply. Very good. So those two are now uh, up and running. Point number four is done. Point number five, set an IP address on the bridge interface that we created, which is 192.8.31.1. Why we need to do that? So at this moment, what do we have done? If we go back to the picture, so we have the wireless is propagating. So if we now open the phone or whatever, we see wireless propagation of the SSID Wi-Fi hotspot. But if we try to connect to it from our phone, we don't uh, get any IP address because we didn't yet configure anything on the bridge interface to provide us an IP address from the DHCP server. To be able to configure the DHCP server on the bridge, we need to put an IP address on that bridge. So we have to set an IP address to be able to configure the DHCP server to provide for anyone who connect his phone to any of those two wireless, the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz to provide IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and so forth. So that's why we need to put an IP address on the bridge. So the IP address they said is 192.8.30.1. Very good. So we go now to the bridge. And then we uh, IP address. And when we put the IP 192.168.30.1 slash 24, and we put it on the bridge bridge hotspot very good so it's there now and uh, now we later we have to configure the dhcp server from this range so anyone connected to any of the wireless you will get an ip of 192.168.30. something .2.3.4 and so forth point number five is done point number six we have to ping to a.a.a.8 .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 and we have to ping to www.google.com and check if it is successful why we need to do that because one of the requirements is that to check if the dns on the microtech router is working so that's something we said we need to be sure that the dns is working so we go to the microtech router let's go close everything here and then we go to uh, the let's go to uh, the terminal and then we ping to a.a.a.8 .a .8 .8. so it's working we ping to google.com it is working so now the dns is working now another uh, requirement uh, that uh, i want to be uh, informing you about is that uh, it's not in the points of the lab but uh, now i just uh, remember it so it's very important uh, that's something because we are going to use it later for the certificate that those two, the www and www.ssl should be enabled. We are going to enable them later. Actually, for the Let's Encrypt, this one is the most important to be enabled, the www. But if you are not going to use the certificate from Let's Encrypt, then it's not necessary to use it. Just something that I wanted to uh, let you know about it. Point number six and point number seven are done. And uh, with those uh, two uh, less points, I have uh, explained to you what are the requirements or the main requirements to have the hotspot working. And we have made the initial configuration on the Microtech router to make it ready to uh, be used for uh, having the hotspot uh, installed on it. So this is all what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.